Hey there, my name is Chris Mango, and I'm the creator of Mango Mischief, a satirical, retro-style JRPG that's available for PC on Steam. If you're watching this video, you're about to see me playing my own game, showing off shortcuts and going into detail about the development process and intentions with essentially every aspect of Mango Mischief, so I think it's fair to say spoiler alert. If you'd like to play my game before watching this, the Steam link is in the description. I hope you enjoy my playthrough and commentary. Alright, it is time for episode 11. Going into the Hidden Haven. Let's save to represent File 11, Episode 11. And uh, let's get moving. Now it's very easy, as you can see here, to reset if you're not careful. Um, I haven't figured out yet if I prefer using the arrow keys or the mouse. I'm going to try it with the mouse. We'll see how this goes. There's a lot of signposts in this region. Click on them all. Some of them will give you experience. A fork in the road. Which way will you choose? To be frank, you most likely have nothing to lose. There are too many cases where choices are fake, and the end doesn't depend on the moves that you make. Now that being said, I'm pretty sure that if you choose this right area, uh, you simply cannot complete the path. I think I made it kind of impossible so that you're automatically uh, going to be reset. But over here, uh, you absolutely can complete the path. You just have to be a little patient. Okay, so we're going to go back. I'm sure my uh, playtesters will be uh, very happy to see me uh, fail this uh, maze multiple times, given how uh, this was a pain in the neck for them. For some of them. Some of them found no problem whatsoever in traversing this uh, this maze. We'll see how this goes for me. Okay, just gonna move a little bit faster now. Probably also will not be talking quite as much as I usually do, mainly because uh, I am kind of focusing a little bit. And every so often you'll get to a gray square kind of check mark. So if you hit a puddle back here, you just restart at the, uh, the last gray square. Sometimes choices do matter and signposts may be misleading, but a learning experience can help stop the bleeding. 60,000 experience obtained. This place isn't so bad after all. So this place, kind of like um, Stimfy Station, you can um, gain experience just by completing parts of the level. I guess the fact that you can see my mouse uh, will let you know exactly uh, how I'm planning on completing this level. So three out of these four chests, the first three, I'll give you items. They're not amazing items, but they're items nonetheless. Obviously, you see treasure chests, you're going to click on them. Um, which leads us into uh, the mimics of this RPG, because of course every good RPG or JRPG needs a mimic enemy. What the? And here we've got a mimic. Of course, given that this is Mango Mischief, um, I'm spelling mimic backwards. So it's a simim. Kimim? Simim? These will be pretty easy to kill when it's four on one. Um, you'll end up versing packs of two or three or four, though, eventually. Um, and so then you have to pay a little bit more attention. But this is not... Um, these are not going to be inherently difficult battles. Uh, they'll be more of a nuisance uh, than anything else. This signpost says... There's a new innovation. It's simply the best. Some monsters may mimic a blue treasure chest. It's never been done, and it's not overused. Prepare so these baddies won't leave you too bruised. I wish we had read this sign first. Fake treasure chests are annoying. Um, the three over here are all going to be a set of three mimics. I forget if the one over here is a mimic or an actual treasure chest, so let's check it out. Alright, taking Collects obtained. That's a legitimate treasure chest. And so obviously if you hit the water, see how far back you go, that's very annoying. And so we'll make our way through again. 
I'm thinking maybe for some of these, I'll purposely hit... Well, not necessarily, but sometimes I might end up hitting a puddle just to talk a little bit further about a specific area. Um, all of these are... All of these puddles are equally... Uh, the paths are equally fair. So, if you notice how the puddles increase from, like, having to cr uh, cross two, then three, then four, then five, now I've got to cross, like, a total of, like, six or so. So there's no checkpoint yet, but if we want to keep moving, we have to go down here. Now, this can be a little annoying. You want to look for where, like, the next empty space is, which is down here. Now, if I use the mouse, um, I... The mouse kind of self pads me right into the puddles, so this becomes a little bit harder for me to deal with. But I'm going to basically go down here and then walk across the bottom to get to this next save area. So I'm going to try to do that. Like that. The next one is up here at the top right. Or, sorry, the top left. So I'm going to have to go not left, then up, then left, because I won't have enough time, I don't think. I'm going to have to go up, left, left. So let's try that. Okay. And then this final one here, I'm going to go down, left, left. That seems to be a little bit better of a path. If I can make it through here, I'll get to another gray square, which will be nice. Okay, so this is like my next checkpoint. Now if I go back and hit a puddle, I have to restart, you know, to the previous gray square, which would be bad. Venturing southeast, you can skip it completely. Unless for thrills, you show your skills and seek rewards repli repletely. Level 8. Sounds like a challenge. It definitely is a challenge. Um, you do not have to do down here in the southeast, but if you're looking for stat boosting items, it's totally worth it. Um, I'm sure my playtesters will want to see me attempt and probably fail this a whole bunch of times because uh, it may have taken them more than a couple minutes to, be to beat. But if you're speedrunning, um, you don't have to worry about down here at all. You can, of course, save the game right here and kind of save, save scum and keep repeating. Although, the gray square is just above here, so it's not going to take that long to uh, go down and to the right. So let's attempt to uh, make our way through here. This may take a while, I apologize in advance. I'm awesome. Um, so the eight on this perimeter, the eight treasure chests on this perimeter, are the uh, stat boosting items. The two here, the two here, the four here, and the four here, uh, these are going to be more mimics, so I'm not going to bother versing them. Uh, you're really looking for these eight chests, and you're getting times four of every single stat boosting item, which is uh, pretty good. It's the equivalent of growing in level. Um, I'm sorry, it's the equivalent of growing four levels in terms of stat boosting items. Once we get these, uh, these eight chests, we'll just, uh, we'll take a puddle and transport back. And so now we're back here. <clears throat> and this is just one step at a time, for the most part. There's a few more situations here that we need to avoid few more puddles. Sometimes it helps to just take a cycle or two to kind of read the room as far as what's going on. Better safe than sorry in a lot of cases. Here's another Mimic. This one chest here guarantees that you're going to fight at least one Mimic in the early part of the game. Because if you just don't, if you just feel like avoiding all the chests up until now, then you wouldn't have experienced any Mimics. Uh, you'll fight a few later on with other enemies. All right, here we have to be careful. Again, the mouse doesn't really work as well as the um, controller or the up, down, left, right arrow keys do here. But basically, we have to keep alternating between uh, top, then bottom, top, then bottom. So I'm going to go top, then go down to bottom, then go up to top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, and bottom. I need to be careful here not to get too greedy in terms of moving. I move two at a time. If I'm doing consistent moves like two at a time, the mouse is kind of nice because the mouse is always going to be too spaced as I move and as the screen moves with me. You can see how the, the mouse is still two away. 
from my regions or from uh, my current location. Here's another gray square, so here's another checkpoint. What a relief, another gray square. A fall up ahead will respawn you right there. This half has almost ended, so try not to mind as you start close encounters of the aquatic kind. 60,000 experience obtained. Level 9, not bad. Talking to the signpost over and over again won't give you any more experience. So soon we're going to start versing some uh, legitimate enemy encounters. Um, you can see by these colored spirals that it's going to happen. You've got some options here because you do see that they're on the puddles. So you can just kind of run into them and then reset back. Or you can wait for the spirals to approach you. Either way, it'll take a little bit of time to sift through. Um, here we've got dark monsters and water monsters. So let's go with... Let's just do neutral slot. It doesn't look like I can um, abuse any element, elemental weaknesses with Marion, at least for this specific battle. However, here we've got Pyromancy All. We've also got some nice Lumamancy Alls. I'll use Lumamancy All when I'm Iraq. Uh, let's do Fire Chaos. I was hoping to hit one of these. Didn't work, but that's okay. Lumamancy All. I could also use Luma Quad. But at least Luma Mancial will guarantee that I hit these two, or at least attempt to hit those two. You can still do a, a regular miss, but most of the time you'll be landing hits as long as you're uh, swinging for a specific creature. And let's finish off, hopefully, with Luma Mancial. Nice. So close to level 10. If you end up hitting a puddle, you reset back here. Which isn't a huge walk back. I'm hoping I remember. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to. But I'm hoping I remember... Um, something for my boss battle. Um, let me just set this up first. Okay, I'm hoping I remember to steal as Marion. Um, so even if I forget here, this is a pretty useful uh, tip in general. No Geomancy All, no Aromancy All. That's kind of annoying, so I can't abuse the All pieces. Um, in general, when you're doing a boss battle as Marion, you should be looking to steal some gold. That way you can get double the reward. Um, this might also help influence the order in which you complete dungeons, because maybe you want to actually complete the Marion dungeons last, because you'll receive the most gold if you complete them last. And so you can steal that much gold as well. You know, when you're using things like loot body or steal from Marion, you're getting duplicates of those rewards. So general food for thought. Um, given how many things I'm trying to juggle in my mind at the moment, I'm not sure if I'll remember to steal as Marion. Um, but you'd get a good amount of extra gold if you do. They're all almost dead, so I'm not going to bother healing. Hopefully I can finish off some of them soon. Neutral slot. Now I've got an actual attack all with Marion, which is nice. That doesn't require a TP or anything. Alright, level 10. I'm probably going to hit a puddle. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Let me switch to classes. Again, if I can level them, if I can level them up reasonably equitably, every time I do that quick page down scan, I'm looking to make sure that I'm at the same level with the same experience. So let's keep moving up again. I'm going to wait for the. Uh, the yellow to walk over here. Now if you click this sign, it says this needs to be quick because the cycles keep going something 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 something. Um, if you spend too much time on the signpost, the puddles will warp you back to the uh, last gray square. Here we've got some fire and some thunder um, baddies. Let's go with water chaos on the off chance that I can actually hit the fire monsters, which didn't really work out too well, but that's okay. Uh, we've got Cryomancy All, and we've got Hydromancy All. I'm going to go with Hydromancy All here. 
I'm going to go with Neutromancy All. Again, we've talked about before how uh, neutral attacks won't get to exploit any won't get to exploit any elemental damage, um, but it costs less. So if you can't exploit it anyway, you might as well use the uh, the cheaper version. Let's go with Ice Chaos, hoping to hit a Thunder Monster. Didn't pay off that time. I'm going to use Techno Slot because I'm pretty sure I have an Ice Weapon, and if that's true. It'll do super effective damage to these uh, Thunder Monsters. Okay. Techno Slot costs TP. It's not a neutral, non-elemental attack, though. That would require the prefix Neutra instead of Techna. Techna means it's going to cost uh, technical points. Um, let's go with Cryomancy All. And let's do Techno Slot again. Okay, so far so good. Almost done with this. Um, let's use Nutra uh, Nutra Mancy All. The Mancy represents magic. Things like Slot or some other suffixes represent physical attacks. Let's let this other red spiral come to me. That way I don't have to go through the puddles again. Uh, ice and Light are weak against Thunder and Darkness. So, I want to focus a little bit on hitting... Well, there we go. I want to hit the Ice Monsters with Marion and Sprig, while Marrow and Arak take out the Light Monsters. I don't know if I said that right, actually, so I'm going to repeat. Um, I want to use... I want to focus on Dark spells when I'm Marion and Arak. I want to focus on these Ice Monsters by using Thunder Attacks when I'm Sprig and Marion. Sometimes you're just kind of talking, and you're not exactly... You didn't really listen to what you just said, so you're not exactly sure if uh, what you said was what you wanted to say. Level 7s. This needs to be quick since the cycles keep going for the monsters nearby. All 8 elements are showing. There's a little bit of a gap here. And moving forwards, there isn't a gap, so we've got to keep moving. Got to go fast. four battles here. We'll have a couple more battles before we finish the first half of this uh, of this dungeon. Almost done with uh, this half of the dungeon. As far as the maze part goes, we're almost done. There's still a little bit... Uh, there's still quite a few battles to go. And you can see here I'm favoring de trying to deal light and fire damage, if possible. If I can't, you know, I just do whatever I can. One, two. Okay, I didn't finish off the other one. Maybe a regular attack will? Okay, nice. These battles shouldn't take a while. I just wanted to make sure that you reverse these enemies a few times before, uh, before moving on to the second half of the dungeon. I used double recoil there to try to get done some serious damage. It was okay. Not the greatest. I just recently got Geomancy All, which means now I can actually hit multiple wind enemies for super effective damage, which is kind of nice. Um, if you wait to go into this dungeon, um, if you wait a few more medallions to the point where you're higher levels, and that way you've got more uh, Lumamancy, Umbermancy, other element all spells. Uh, it'll be easier to beat these enemies in terms of exploiting weaknesses, but they are a lot stronger too. They'll take a, a lot harder hits in an attempt to kind of balance this fairly. Um, now, Mary does not have any sort of like purple heart skill that Sprig has to exploit when uh, she is really low HP, so I, I legitimately have to be a little careful here. Uh, let's root the Whirlwind on this Rocktopus. Also, in retrospect, it doesn't really matter if... Uh, Marion dies, and at some point in this game, just to show a little bit of versatility, I wouldn't mind having a character actually be unconscious when the game when the battle is won. 
you'll still gain experience even if you're knocked out. So, let's say there's a battle where Marion and Sprig are both knocked out, and Mero and Arak together just barely get to eke out the win. Um, that's fine. Everyone's still going to get full experience. They get revived for, with 1 HP, unless they level up, in which case they'll get full HP anyway. Two more battles in this little area. Uh, maybe... Actually, she's got an ice weapon, doesn't she? So keeping a, keeping a mental note of which weapons you're using, at least with Marion and Sprig, you should pretty much know what weapons they're using. Um, I just, right now, I've got the ice weapon for Marion and the thunder weapon for Sprig. Uh, that'll let you know if there's an element that you can exploit um, with physical damage. Because they are um, pretty strong physically. Let's go with... Well, Nutra Slot wouldn't allow us to exploit the uh, weakness. Let's do Elite Beat. Maybe if I can hit 1-1 one one or something, that'd be nice. There's one, and didn't get the second one, but that's okay. Cryomancy should do a lot of damage. Nutromancy might be able to seal the deal. Cool. Uh, almost level 10. Not level 10, though, so you might just want to pause for a second just to make sure you're fully healed. I'll get level 10 next turn, and then I'll uh, switch to a new set of classes. Thunder Chaos might be great if we can hit these ice enemies. And again, the color gives away their element, as well as um, the attacks they're going to use, the names of the attacks, as well as the icons. Here's the light icon, and it says Holy. Thunder Weapon. Awesome. Uh, he's on the left, huh? Cool. Level 10s, which means uh, more skills. And switching to the next class. I'm not very fast at rotating through these different levels. I'm going to save also, for two reasons. First of all, I have just fought a bunch of battles, and secondly, um, if I do hit a puddle up here, I might just kind of save Scum and head back right here. Because these do take a little while, which can be kind of obnoxious. Uh, let's go with... I guess anything I want at this point. Not too much to exploit here from Marion's perspective. I could slow them. I could have used, like, Ensnare. Um, I've tried breaking the mental habit of always going for the damage when uh, potentially starting off one or two rounds by buffing your bu buffing your allies or nerfing the enemies. Those could even be more advantageous and actually, like, save a turn or two in the long run. Six, moving on up. Or I guess those colored spirals are moving on down. Uh, Reap the Whirlwind can at least focus one of these, but let's actually go with Ensnare. Let's slow them down. I think I made most of these enemies mostly immune to status ailments, so like paralyzing them, for example, might not be the greatest, uh, the greatest move, might be kind of a waste of a move. But there's still other options you can explore, especially when it comes to slowing them down or lowering their uh, defense, either physically or magically. I used Lumamancy all. Um, I could have just used Nutramancy all. Wasted like a, a little bit of magic points. Going to do some good damage on these uh, green whales. Their names are things like Rocktopus and Narwhaft to represent wind and uh, earth, obviously. And if they get to attack again, you can kind of see uh, their skills. 
and their icons to give away yet again that they're going to be using Earth Halite Haven. Each of these eight different types of monsters in this area have something Haven, I think. Um, uh, it's always an alliteration, another H word and then Haven. Like Halite Haven or Hoarfrost Haven. Uh, just to uh, make it a little bit more fun when I'm creating the names for all of these uh, skills and the uh, the animations. Another level up. Keep moving through these battles. After this yellow and red one, then we'll be done in this area. Let's hopefully... Should we water chaos? Um, she has an ice weapon. So let's actually go for Techna Slot. That'll be more effective than Ice Chaos. Let's go with Hydromancy All. I'd like to think that in different dungeons, I tend to be focusing on slightly different skills, or at least rotating in certain skills I didn't really use beforehand. Um, sometimes it's because I just got a new skill, and sometimes it's because uh, the battles make other skills relevant, because it's a different type of battle with different types of enemies and different types of advantages and disadvantages. Um, let's just use Technosaw again. Pretty easy way to level up. Alright, I'm out of TP, uh, but I can use Thunder Chaos to hopefully um, hit some ice enemies. I guess not. Let's mix things up a little bit. Let's go with the Bronto Mancy All. That was pretty nice. Again, Thunder Weapon, so if it's Sprig, I'm going to use another physical attack that can hit everyone, like Judgment. And uh, I could either seal the deal with Umbra Mancy All, or I don't have Umbra Quad yet. Umbra Quad wouldn't be bad either. Sprig is also low HP, meaning that Purple Heart would have been good uh, for single hit damage, or single battle damage. Uh, there's no more puddles here. Okay. Next area. 25,000 experience obtained. Just leveled up with everyone. I mean, save the game again. So I don't need to heal right now, but if I didn't level up, I could. Remain at current location. I'm not going all the way back, especially after the maze that I just beat. Soon you'll find mermaids in four different flavors. Use their locations to mark your behaviors. They'll jump you only where the ground is stable, so remember or flee if you are able. We'll elaborate more on that in a moment. I'm going to try to drag... Um, I'm going to try to drag some of these enemies over here and dodge them for the most part. The more I can drag to the left, the easier it'll be to get around everyone. There are treasure chests here, which aren't bad. But I was able to uh, kind of circumvent all of them. So, as far as navigating this maze goes, there's a bunch of dead ends. The water pillars are treated the, sa are treated the same as puddles, in that you end up going back and resetting. You can see kind of advanced that there's dead ends here. But there are also these battles of mermaids. Um, through pretty much every path. I'm going to actually spend a lot of time escaping from these mermaid battles. And it's not because I'm being lazy, or because I just want to get through this pretty fast. Um, but because by keeping the mermaids in place, you actually know where a safe uh, rest square is. See, this square here is where I specifically have a mermaid fight come about. And it's also a safe spot in terms of the water pillars will not travel there. So in terms of timing exactly how high up you're supposed to run when it's kind of off screen, you just keep running, 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 and you know you're safe when you actually get forced into a mermaid battle. So I'm going to keep the mermaid battles um, alive or existing. Um, that way I can still get that sort of um, relief to know that I'm not going to get hit by a water pillar if I have to uh, reset and do it again. I think over here is safe. I believe I want to go north. Oops. See, now I've got to reset the entire thing. My, uh... I messed up the uh, controlling a little bit with my mouse. But if I had beaten these mermaid battles, uh, it would have been the case, at least I'm fairly sure, that, um... 
the mermaids would be gone next time you run through the maze. And so you might be a little bit less confident on where you should be running to and where is a safe spot and where is not a safe spot. We can use the mouse. And again, I know I'm in a safe area because of the mermaid battle, which I'm again going to attempt to escape from. We will be fighting some of these. You have to fight at least some mermaids towards the end, no matter what, just to get through the path. All right, let's try to be a little bit more careful now. Safe spot again. Uh, this one is a pretty tight run. Uh, it used to be tighter, but I just found it to be pretty much impossible. Uh, so I made it a little bit easier to run through. There's only a few more of these kind of uh, interrupted mermaid battles. Notice how I'm not... I, I am My HP is getting whittled away a little bit, right? So I'm just going to do some healing now. Are there any water pillars right here? Doesn't look like it. Now, if I go left and up, there will be a dead end, which kind of stinks because I just made my, my way around. Um, hitting a dead end there will force you to reset down to this gray square, which I might accidentally end up doing anyway. Um, but there is a signpost in this dead end that gives you a lot of experience. And so if this is like your first playthrough, it doesn't hurt to do that dead end. Um, of course, the downside of hitting a dead end is that the only way to escape the dead end is to get hit by a water pillar. Okay. Here's a, a safe square, which might not be super easy to see, based on the fact that um, there's a lot of water pillars both right below and right above the square I'm on. So keeping these mermaids, mermaid battles alive can be very helpful. I'm going to pause here for a second. I need to get over here now. There's Ventanas, who's stuck on an island. Poor Ventanas. I'm going to save again. And let's see if I can navigate throughout the entire thing. Okay, nice. These mazes were a little bit different back during the beta stages, but based on how some playtesters were playing the mazes and having certain successes and certain failures, um, I made a couple slight changes uh, to uh, how we're organizing everything. Here's the next gray square. So hitting a, a water pillar now will uh, reset me back to here. So I've made it through most of the maze. Uh, let's actually fight these uh, mermaid battles now. Three out of four were um, slowed. Now, as far as mermaids go, um, all four of these mermaids are weak to fire, but slightly weak to fire. If you really want to exploit their major weaknesses, you would have to go color by color. So you can benefit from using things like Pyromancy All, which says super effective, but if you really want to exploit their main uh, weaknesses in terms of elements, uh, base it off the colors. So light is, ver light is weak to dark, dark is weak to light, ice is weak to thunder, and thunder is weak to ice. So if I use like Judgment, which will hit everyone, it'll deal especially high damage to this Murma Frost because it's ice type and I've got a thunder weapon, and it did a lot more damage. Obviously, again, the names give it away, right? Uh, Magnet, Frost, uh, Morose, kind of like Dark, and Moon. I know the Moon doesn't create its own light, but, you know, there's only so many uh, words you can use that represent the eight elements before you start reaching a little bit. Uh, let's go for... I don't want to use Neutral Slot, because I want to uh, exploit the fact that Ice beats Thunder down here. What else can I do? Um, Lumomancy All, to really start whittling away this dark type. And Judgment is just strong all around, even if we're not going to exploit anything here. Will a regular attack do it? No. Will this regular attack do it? Yes. Do I get level 10? Boom, level 10. I'm getting some more good uh, skills here. I'm getting some um, items that cause certain status ailments. 
which isn't something I'm exploiting too much, at least in this run through. Level 5 for everyone, and we've got two more mermaid type battles. Uh, let's just do the same thing. Techno slot. Yeah. Ensnaring was fine as a first move last time, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now, being raged kind of stinks. I lose all control over, uh, over Sprig. I wonder if Umbra Coda will one shot this mermaid. Maybe not, but it's worth a shot. Yeah, he did a good amount of damage. Um, Umbermancy All. Maybe that'll deal a good amount of damage to this Mermoon. Good. Can't use Techno Slot. But let's use something like... Bullseye? On this Thunder Mermaid. Nice. A lot of damage there. Hopefully you're seeing, um these characters get stronger over time. Whether whether it's because we're just increasing in terms of class levels, or because we are on occasion using stat boosting items. Um, double recoil. Just to try to do a good amount of damage. Triple recoil uh, is a stronger version of double recoil, but you really lose a lot of, a lot of your HP. So, unless you're going to be healing right away, or unless it's like... Wow, okay, so I used it it ended up randomly hitting four times there, which is a little bit of a waste. Um, but triple recoil is very, very strong at the expense of the fact that there's a good chance that character can get knocked out next turn. Although if Sprig uses triple recoil, he then is actually in a really good position for things like Purple Heart and Medal of Honor. That's a really good combo I like to use with Sprig in the later stages of the game. Um, again, it would be using double or triple recoil. Um to reduce Sprig's HP significantly, and then using Purple Heart of Medal of Honor, which does more damage based on how low um, his HP is. So I find that to be a really nice combo. After this, I think we'll have two more battles. We'll have a um, mini-boss battle, and then a regular boss battle. The mini boss battle is going to be Wally, a character that we'll actually see uh, two more times throughout the game. And then we'll have the boss battle where uh, Marion versus uh, a dragon with multiple um, stages or multiple forms. Done with this battle. We have a little bit more. Um, eventually, Sprig will learn Light Chaos, uh, but right now he does not know it, so we can't explode. We cannot exploit the uh, Dark versus Light weakness. We do Nutri Chaos, although it might just be easier to do uh, a little bit more attack. Boom Quad. All right, let's see who we end up hitting here. Oh no, hit the Dark One. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Wow. Alright, Elite Beat will definitely finish that off. And we leveled up just fine. We got a few more Water Pillars to burst now. They're moving fast and in twos, so we need to be a little bit careful here. And then over here they move in ones. So a little bit of a pace change there. Alright, made it through this part. I can inch up one more. All the Spirals here, they will not fight you. You can voluntarily fight them if you just want to grind out some more battles. I just wanted to make sure that you had access to more battles in case you wanted um, more experience. See, the mouse is equally spaced every time, so I don't have to move the mouse while the uh, screen is moving. Steady hands and steady feet have earned an experiential treat. There's one more area to cross before fighting the mini-boss. Level 9, level 9, 9, 9, 9. Alright, the, uh, the checker chessboard of death. I think I just, I don't use the mouse, I end up using, like, up, down, left, and right. Time it perfectly.
All right. I made it, and then here's more mermaid battles in case you want to battle. Here's a gold statue in case you need to heal or go back to the entrance of Hidden Haven, which uh, you definitely don't want to do unless you completed the boss and mini boss. That was just to say, uh, we're almost at the end. Only the fighters who show the most skill have the resilience to outlast the dragon's will. A piece of medallion is what they'll be winning. Maybe the sign should have been at the beginning. That's a relief. So there is a medallion after all. We're going to save again. Hey, looks like we finally found someone. Maybe he can help us. Yeah, I'm sure that the mysterious figure waiting for us at the very end of a human, absent, monster-filled maze of death will be a perfectly pleasant character. You should know better by now, Mero. Hello, mortals. Are you implying that you're not mortal? No, it's just some... I've been waiting for you. Seriously? Why do so many bosses just stand around on a platform doing nothing useful? I, er... I am the master of the mazes down here in Hidden Haven. I am the titan of tidal traps. I can see you all shaking in awe, trembling in fear at my great power. If you are too frightened to fight me and wish to turn around and run away, I would not blame you. I'm going to call you Wally. W what? Is your name actually Wally? No, my name is Super Ultra Mega. Listen, Wally, I apologize for rushing you, but re we really need your medallion piece, and then we'll happily be on our way. I don't have a medallion piece, and my name isn't Wally. We came all this way and you don't even have half a medallion? That's pretty lame, Wally. Why would this place even exist if we didn't have to come here? I don't have a medallion piece, but the boss behind me is the keeper of half of the skill medallion. Would you mind stepping aside, please, so that we may challenge your boss? But, but, I'm the Maze Master. Wally the Maze Master. Yes, I'm Wally the- Wait, no! Dude, if you're not the boss of this place, why are we even having a dialogue with you? Why aren't you just another colored spiral? Well, I mean, I'm a mini-boss. A mini-boss? Yeah, I mentioned it on one of the signs. So your job is to write signs for the real boss down here? Look, this is the only full-time gig I could find that offers good benefits, and in this economy, it's not like climbing the corporate monster ladder is easy. Give me a break, okay? Sorry to hear that, Wally. Thanks. Do we still need to fight you? Yeah, it's in my contract. But you don't have a medallion piece, so we could all just team up on you? That seems kind of one-sided, honestly. Well, let's get this over with. Agreed. He's actually pretty strong in terms of doing water damage. Um, I might actually still have on the water talismans from uh, back with the captain, so um, that would actually help a lot here. I know I've got four of them. Uh, fire damage would be great. Uh, I cannot do that with Marion, though. I'm going to use Elite Beat. I don't want to use Double Recoil because there's a decent chance that uh, Wally will actually kill me um, if I sacrifice my own HP. Takes a decent amount of health. Uh, fire Chaos might be okay. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. Alright, not bad. Two Fire Hits is better than one in most cases. So given that I'm going to be using Fire Spells with both Sprig and, Ma and Marrow, it makes sense for me to use Ascendancy to increase the magic attack of the entire party. Dire Deluge, again. Not a super easy boss, but again, that's the point. He's a... Well, at least a mini-boss. I can loot him, by the way. Steal some stuff from him. Stuff that I was going to get anyway after winning. We'll stick to Pyromancy and Fire Chaos to do fire damage and then more fire damage. You'll notice he also does a good job of really... Um, debuffing you, especially with these, uh, like, agility down, like, double down. Um, Marion is very, very slow right now, so is Mero. So I need to be careful, because I'm not attacking as frequently as I would like to. So I can use things like Meta Heal All, or for, uh, Marion, I could increase the speed of my entire, uh, party if I have that skill yet. Stratagem, increase the agility of the entire party. I might as well do this, because Marion's not really doing that much damage anyway. It's really Sprig and Mero in this fight. And so now we get to move up a little bit more frequently. He's half dead. He's arguably harder than some of the real bosses, um, since most of the real bosses, since all the real bosses have to do um, a one-on-one -on -one battle. Uh, let's see. 
I'm going to use Lumaclod just to hit him four times. It might not do a lot, although his magic is increased. You know, 4,000 damage, not bad. So I didn't need to heal immediately, although now I might end up healing again. Fire Chaos. Almost finished. Hopefully you can see that this battle is a little bit more difficult than uh, than the early stages of the game. I'm going to use Lumaclod. Um, I don't actually need to heal myself because he's about to die. Level 10. Cool. I just got Dark Chaos and Light Chaos with uh, Marion and Sprig, respectively. I kind of feel bad for Wally. Oh, he said, I did my best, I have no regrets, which I'm pretty sure I made as a reference to some of those old Pokemon trainers, at least back in Pokemon Blue and Red. Yeah, he didn't even get any boss music. Whatever, let's keep going. Let's find the real boss. Alright, so real boss time. Uh, let's change class. I'm going to move to this class. You'll see why in a second. It doesn't really matter that much. But basically, I'm going to have to tr change Marion's class anyway, so I'll change her back to the other level 5 uh, after this is over, if I remember. Um, save. Oh, let me equip. What do I want to equip Marion with? Um, it'll be her spells, not her weapons, that abuse elements. Unless I wanted to use a staff, actually. Um, Thunder Necklace, not that great. But one of the three elements of the dragon is Earth. I think it's Fire, Earth, and Ice? She doesn't have a ribbon. Let's give her a ribbon. Um, do I want to do TP, HP, or MP? HP or MP would make the most sense here, because using Devastation isn't really going to be that strong. Um, let's go with... We're going to go with MP, actually. Uh, also, HP Mini Amulet. I'm going to exchange that with whoever has an HP Maxi Amulet. So, even having just one HP Maxi Amulet can make a huge difference in your gameplay, because you can just make sure that whoever's about to fight the boss has that specific... Um, HP max amulet. The other ones can just have mini amulets or whatever else you want to give them. I think that should be just fine. Let's just fight. I'm not really worried about this. Um, I do want to make sure I steal. This little dragon has half of the skill medallion. I'll take care of this in no time. What do you say we all just attack together kind of like what we did for Wally? But that goes against the arbitrary rules imposed on us to make things more difficult. Don't worry about it. I'll make it quick. Be careful, Marion. Yeah, yeah. How tough could it be? Now, there are three forms here. I'm pretty sure the first three forms, um, the first two forms don't have anything to steal. But the final form does. The final form is where the, uh, the money is, as well as any other rewards. So I'm going to focus down um, this form, as well as the next form, as quickly as possible. Now, I was slowed, which kind of stinks, but that's okay. I'm just going to keep spamming Thunder Chaos, because it's super effective. There are other things I could do, like lowering the speed of the uh, enemy or increasing my speed. Usually, I believe, you get two attacks off to their one. But given that I'm slowed right now, you'll only see me it will be alternating, like one and one. Usually get two turns. Oh, there's my second turn, now that my uh, speed is restored. This first form is supposed to be pretty easy. As you can see here, I can just get away with spamming the same thing. Um, the enemy, regardless of the form, has, and you can see the three colors here, um, fire for red, brown for earth, and dark blue for ice. And you'll see those same three colors in the next form as well. That wasn't so hard. Wait a second. Where's the victory music? More fourth wall breaks, because obviously I love those. What's going on? This is not my final form. Welcome to plenty of RPGs and animes. All right, now he hits harder. Again, um, my speed is down, which kind of stinks. It'd be nice to get two turns to this enemy's one, but we'll just have to uh, make do with what we have. I chose the MP Ribbon because um, the Chaos spells can really sap a lot of uh, Marion's MP. Without restoring some magic points each turn, 
Um, you can imagine that Ivy is pretty much zero by now, probably. I want to be careful, um, because I don't want to get killed, obviously. Um, I'm going to use a steal, just to double, triple check that, um, there's nothing to steal here. Okay, nothing to steal. So it will be the final form. I really don't want to die. It looks like I'm taking... I only took 500-ish damage from that Earth attack, but that could be deceiving, because if he attacks me with fire or ice, my uh, amulet will not protect me. Because remember, I have an Earth amulet, so I'm not going to take as much damage from Earth as I would from the other two spells, the other two elements. Macro Magma, like this one, for example, right, 1200, right, if he gets a critical hit, he could potentially kill me right now. Um, hopefully I hit him at least once. Okay, good. Phew, I just had to get to the third form. Okay, phew, finally finished. Nope, still not my final form. Uh-oh. Super badass looking final form. Um, the thing is, he doesn't actually have any real attacks. He just boosts himself, says 9999 damage. I'm going to loot, um, attempt to loot. Oh, I don't have 50 TP. Wait. I need, oh, 250 MP. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to guard, and just wait until I get enough magic points. There we go. Guard returned some magic points, and my MP amulet did. Because I want to get a loot off. I want to make sure that I seal as much stuff as possible. And I stole 20,000 gold, as well as Maxi Tonic All and Maxi Magic All. And I could just sit here and do nothing the entire time. He's just going to keep getting stronger, well, theoretically stronger and stronger and stronger. He's never going to attack because he doesn't have any other moves. The thing is, if you do, if you try to do any other regular attack, it just seems to do plain damage, which can be, like, super frustrating. But as long as you're sticking with any of the three elemental skills, again, water, wind, or thunder, water, wind, or thunder, any one of these three, which were super effective against every form, take a look at what happens. Um... Let's just use Thundercast twice, or Thundercast once to hit him twice. So, I made the weaknesses to Water, Wind, and Thunder insanely high. So the amount of damage I'll do is this. It's designed to be a, a one-hit KO automatically. The third form is just a complete joke, although do make sure you steal gold uh, from him before uh, before you easily auto-kill him. You, you really can't die from the, uh, the third form. Uh, so, yeah, let's get out of here. You obtained one of the two skill medallion halves. So I want to make sure I switch my class back, um, so that Marion has the same class and experience and level 5 that all the others do. But first, we go to the cutscene again. With each medallion piece, I keep being reminded who I'm fighting for, why I'm on this journey. I'm going to hold down the mouse. Uh, similarly, you can hold down the spacebar or whatever controller button uh, moves you through dialogue quickly or cinematic or cutscenes quickly. We're seeing this kind of um, unraveling of army battles. Um, judging by the fact that we're watching the second eighth of Sprig's cutscene, that makes me uh, think that the Marion left skill medallion... Um, opens up this part of the cutscene. So I guess technically we have the first eighth, the second eighth, the seventh eighth, and the eighth eighth of the uh, of the cutscenes now. So we're actually missing orange, gray, purple, blue. We're missing one of each. It's going to be kind of the middle half, the middle 50%. The middle uh, interquartile range, if you will, statistically. <laughs> This is the 7th, 8th, and the 8th, 8th of Sprig's cutscene. And again, this is being sped up right now because I'm holding down uh, the appropriate buttons. If you just want to sit back and let it ride out, you can do that as well. Um, these cutscenes are pretty long. And so what you can do is, I mean, given that if you were to speedrun this game, it'd probably be like, I don't know, 10 hours, 8 to 10 hours long, maybe like 12 or 15 hours long. Um, these sorts of medallion piece cutscenes would be great opportunities to run to the bathroom or something. Um, 
Sometimes what I'll do is I'll rest something heavy on my spacebar, like a microphone or something, just to keep it pressed down to keep it moving fast while I go run to the bathroom or something. If I need to take a break, if I'm kind of grinding through the whole game in like a day or two. This is the first eighth of Mero's cutscene where Hartania is trying to teach and then Mero comes in and basically just bedazzles everyone and entertains everyone to the point where uh, everyone's interested in following Mero. That was the first and second eighth. Now we switch over to the seventh and eighth eighths of the cutscene, which we've already seen before. Twice, in fact. Towards the end, where Mero is just focusing on defeating monsters, she deserted her class, which, remember, that is part of her backstory. She loves to teach, but she gets so easily distracted by wanting to do other things, like like exploring and beating up the baddies, that she forgets that she does have uh, real obligations and responsibilities to her students. Now we're moving on to Iraq and Rania moving through. We'll keep it sped up right now. This is the spring, the first quarter of this cutscene. We're not going to get to see summer yet or fall yet. And now we jump straight to winter. <laughs> Then after this, we'll have Marion, and that'll be the end of our medallion cutscenes. And after the cutscenes, I'm going to switch back to Marion's class. I'll head over to another dungeon, although I really haven't given any thought as to what the fifth dungeon should be. Um, and then we'll call it an episode. I'm glad I got through uh, Hidden Haven for the most part without too many uh, resets via puddles and waterfalls. I managed to make it through pretty fast. Um, let's see, we've done... Oh, we've done all of the... All of the outer areas? I think the four remaining dungeons are on the central island of Lairis. We did the upper left dungeon, Blizzard Blooms, the upper right dungeon, Hidden Haven, the um, Stimfy Station, which is in an island towards the bottom right a little bit, and then Infernal Inferno we did. So the last four dungeons are actually on the main continent of Lairis, where East and West Haversan are. So we'll have to pick one of those. But before I forget, let's switch back her class to level 5, and now just scrolling through the levels and experiences, they're all at the same level and experience. Obviously I could do things like switching back HP maxi amulets, or other gear. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to buy a couple other things in in East Haversine. Or I could do West Haversine, doesn't really matter. I want to make sure that my mages have good weapons, because I've really been uh, kind of lax with making sure they're super well equipped. If you remember, uh, when I was going through all the East Haversine and West Haversine um, side quests, I made sure I bought mythic weapons for all of... for Sprig and Marion. But I didn't really do that at all for um, Arak and Mero. Um, and it's actually pretty crucial to, um, to get those weapons before going into the final dungeon. So I'm actually going to go back in here, and I'm going to buy, let's go with one of each. You can do two of each, I certainly have enough money, um, but I'm going to get away with just doing one of each here. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I'm planning ahead, yeah, let's just get one of each, that should be fine, not a big deal. I know how I now possess one of each of these, I think I should be pretty much good for now. Um, let me check out how many types of necklaces I have. I have one of each necklace, although I've got five waters, because I picked up four water necklaces before, before the captain, and then I received as a reward one of every elemental necklace. I received one water, one wind, one thunder, one light, and the other ones I'm actually wearing. Ice, 
earth, fire, and dark. Now I want four of every one of these. So I'm going to buy three of everything. Three of every type of necklace. I don't need any more water necklaces. This is planning for the final dungeon, where I exploit every single element. Did I? Yeah. Where I exploit every single element and every single type of status ailment and every single dungeon in kind of like a, a super summation of the entire game. Um, this should be enough for now. I know I'm floating some gold, but I don't really care about that. I don't think I need to do anything else here. So now I've got to figure out which dungeon I want to do next. All of my, all of the monsters will be at level 4 now. I'm sorry, all the monsters will be at level 3 now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the Cricket Thicket and Fading Farms, which will turn into Flourishing Farms. So what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to... Yeah, we'll just get things started here. Here's a place you can always heal. By the way, these boxes will become full um, after the farm has been replenished. This is the NPC we really want to talk to. Basically, the farm here is being overrun by insects. It can't seem to uh, to create uh, to grow any crops because uh, insects keep coming in and um, eating up all the uh, all of the the plants and and crops. Can I help you? Yeah, where are we? My name is Agrix. Apologies, my name is Sprig. I'm Mero, nice to meet you. Marion, and I'm Iraq. Could you imagine how long it would take if we all had to introduce, introduce ourselves every single time we talked to someone? Would you mind telling us where we are? My friends and I decided to leave this city and tend to this humble farmland to grow flowers and vegetables. Humble is certainly one word you could use to describe this place. It does look like your farm has fallen on hard times. You're right, we're fading. We'd be flourishing if it weren't for the monsters that keep stealing our crops. Fading farms and flourishing farms. What you talking about? I don't see any baddies around here. Follow me. They come from the cricket thicket. We tried lighting these torches to scare them away, but they persisted. Maybe regular fire isn't scary enough. What do you mean? Watch and learn. So Mary's using some Everflame right now. Since we do have it. Uh, unfortunately, Everflame will... Uh, not do the trick here. Everflame at your service. If it did, um, this would be a really short dungeon. I bet that'll stop the baddies. And we're about to be overrun by more insects. And you see the crops right now will will be even fewer crops when we get back out. Wow, I didn't realize things were this bad. Those poor flowers and veggies. Yep, that's life here. Can we do something to help? I'm not sure how we can stop those monsters from invading, if even the Everflame is useless. There must be something else that can help us out. Wait a second. What is it, Iraq? There are a few entries in the Arcane Spellbook that I can read. He's scrolling through the pages, sifting through the pages. I've got it. What's it say? Some monsters will flee right after they see a flame that is made from their family. And if you are seeking a sign that is good, just look for the posts that are written on wood. The signposts have certainly been helpful in the past. In fact, sometimes the signposts have been so eerily relevant to our quests that I wonder what other people would think if they read them. Kind of like the world revolves around us. Fourth wall break. So anyway, did that rhyme provide any insight on how to save our farm? I believe so. Mero had the right idea when she tried using a magical fire, but I think I need to use ingredients from the actual insects to repel them. If you're going to go bug hunting, please be careful. The cricket thicket can be very chaotic. I'll replace the Everflame torches with new ones in case you're able to make other magical fires from the insects. And so Agrix disappears. Agrix refer uh, referencing agriculture. Farming. And so now we are off to go bug hunting. 25,000 experience attained. We're all at the same level right now. Um, now, if you're grinding out a decent number of um, enemies, you should pretty much be moving on to Omega classes soon. You'll see here, 
that we're almost at level 10 with everything, right? There's just one more level to move up from level 5, and then there's usually maybe one more level, or one more class for each character. Level 5, level 9, uh, there's two more. Level 5, level 8, and level 5, level 7. So we're almost up to the Omega classes, which we'll get access to during the next episode, when we go bug hunting. The bugs are all in here. Every single one of these entrances brings you to a different part of the forest, part of the cricket thicket. The corners, you can see here if you exit out in this area, you'll end up on the left side of the overworld. So you do have some freedom as far as where you want to access. Basically, it's kind of like a huge, maybe like Pac-Man type maze, where the queen centipede that Iraq will face in a solo battle will end up appearing up here as a black spiral. Um, but there's eight other, eight other? Six other? Eight other? There's a whole bunch of other colored spirals. I think eight other colored spirals here. When farmers are farming on a sticky wicket, due to insects invading from the cricket thicket, a rainbow of ten torches can be just the ticket to act as a ward and create a fine picket. Collect 10 different bugs once you force a submission, 10 bits from each type for a full acquisition. And as for the person who completes the mission, the spell must be cast by a wise light magician. There's a rack. Once the pests are finally blocked from the farm, they will come to this pond and sound the alarm. The centipede queen, with, with all of her charm, guards a medallion piece and is eager to harm. So the idea here is that we're going to have to verse uh, quite a few battles here, and we're going to have to beat enough bugs to collect colored bits. Um, 10 of each color. And so once we collect 10 bits of each of the 10 colors, we'll be able to restore the 10 torches. So we're going to start here uh, next episode. I'm going to call the day. And when we return uh, for the next episode, we're going to be doing a lot of battles and just uh, gathering a lot of uh, little key item pieces here. You'll notice the fragments we have show that we have four uh, halves of the eight we have four halves of the eight halves required for the full skill medallions. Uh, next episode will be a lot of grinding out battles. Uh, thanks for staying with me this long, and I will see you uh, next time. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more clips about Mango Mischief, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. The Steam link for my game, as well as all Mango Mischief social media links, are posted in this video's description. I think you'll enjoy my satirical, retro-style, turn-based JRPG, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section below. Thanks!